Hey everyone, in this video we're going to be looking at chapter 13 of the Mythical Man Month, which is called The Whole and the Parts. This is another chapter, like the last, where a lot of the content is likely to be out of date as a result of there not being a scarcity of computing power in the modern world, like there was when this book was written, and also that debugging is done on machine in real time as opposed to back then when it was done more or less by physically printing stacks of paper that were console outputs of errors and data states. With that said, there are still a couple insights that I found useful and worthwhile. The first section is called Designing the Bugs Out, and it starts out with a really great quote that I'll share here. The most pernicious and subtle bugs are system bugs arising from mismatched assumptions made by the authors of various components. This is a fascinating insight. So when you think about it, a programming system is going to be made by a whole team of people and likely even many teams of people, and they're all more or less assuming that their peers are doing well and building products that are planned and so on, which is a reasonable expectation. It just ends up being a source for bugs if there is some discrepancy between the intended versus actual behaviors. The solution to this, the author suggests, is to spend a meaningful amount of time designing a program and its system, and then iterating several times and circulating the iterations among the rest of the team, and doing all this before even starting to code. Design as an emergent process makes sense since you'll have a vague sense of what a final product should be at the beginning. But as you break an abstract concept into broad pieces, the need to give more detail on each of these pieces appears as well. Take a website, for example. If you start with the concept of, well, let's say you want to build a website that aggregates dog sitting opportunities. You have this very broad project. You'll realize that you need a few different database entities like dogs, owners, walkers, etc then you'll realize that for each of these, they'll have certain kinds of attributes, like perhaps name and address for the owner, breed and weight for the dog, realistic walking range for the walkers, and so on. Then you'll realize you need various screens for the website for account management, screens that allow users to find each other, and so on. When I started that example, I didn't have any of those details in mind, but it just came up as a result of thinking broadly about what a dog walking marketplace website would entail. So going into excruciating detail in the design phase will save a lot of bugs later since you'll, mo since you'll have mostly planned for edge cases and so on. If planning is done well enough, the bugs that arise are more likely to be self-contained, such as incorrect styling on the website for an obscure screen size or something along these lines, where problems can be discovered and fixed in the span of one feedback loop. Now, when I initially broke the site into entities of owners, dogs, and walkers, these are something called a module, which can be defined as an item by which further refinement can be processed, can, by which further refinement can proceed independently of other work, with the author adding that Quote, the degree of this modularity determines the adaptability and changeability of the program. In other words, you or one of your teammates can flesh out the details of the owner, another can do the dog, and another still can do the walkers, and they'll only have to come back together when it's time to define the entity relationships. The majority of the rest of the chapter is related to on and off machine debugging, and so we'll skip over that for now since off machine debugging is generally a relic of a bygone era when we didn't have interactive shells to work with. The long story short is that we should all be thankful that we can run and debug code in real time rather than having to wait for a computer to be available to print out log, logs for us to comb through and then hope we can find the underlying issues. So with all that being said, that's all for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and found it thought-provoking, and I'll see you all in the next one.